So, is it love bombing from a narcissist or is it real love? Real, genuine, authentic love. If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist. And welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. So, is it love bombing or is it real love? Is it authentic? Is is this genuine? What is it, y'all? So, what y'all? Love bombing and real love are two separate things. Love bombing can feel and look like real love. It, it's it's like a a good substitute. You know, you see what I'm saying? It's just like love. If love is sugar, if real love, if real authentic love is sugar, then Love bombing is a uh, splendor. <laughs> they look the same. They might even taste the same, but at a, at a cellular molecular level, they're different. You know, they look the same. It's a good sub. It could be a good substitute sometimes. It feels the same. You know what I mean? But later on, the effects take don't take on different paths. You know, it is how it goes. Love bombing is sugar. I mean, love love is sugar. Love bombing is splendor. You know, you see what I'm saying? That, but that's how it goes, though. You know, so some of the main differences between the two, y'all, is that love bombing, that, that real, genuine love, takes time. It really, really does. Real, genuine, authentic love takes time. It is one of those things that, that it, it is really real. Like, love bombing is quick, fast. It's meant, love bombing is meant to ensnare somebody really quickly. It is meant, it's meant, it's like literally y'all listen to it. It's a bomb. It's a bomb. It, once it explodes, it goes everywhere. Love bombing is just piling on things to get somebody to fall for them. It's a manipulation tactic. It's to get you to fall for them, to fall head over heels for them. Because a lot of times, just being realistic, a lot of narcissists, think that they really do love you. They're, they're expressing themselves as if they really do love you. But in the end, you see, it's just really love bombings. But maybe it started off as genuine, but love bombing is how they get you. You know, they don't know how to show genuine, authentic love sometimes, so they love bomb you. So love bombing, it looks like and feels like, it looks and feels like real love, but it's quick, y'all. It's fast. I'm not saying you can't fall in genuine love really fast, but love, real genuine love, true love, takes time y'all it really just does it's, it's crock pot you put love in a crock pot love bombing is microwavable love bombing you can put it in the microwave you, you rip the plastic off it's 90 seconds it's ready rice you know what i mean it's, it's ready rice you put it in the microwave for 90 seconds it's hot and ready you know ready rice <laughs> but that's the space that's how it goes love it takes time you have to slow yourselves down that's why i tell people you have to slow down slowing down is the way to differentiate between the two Slow it down. Love bombing is fast. It's, it's, it's just overwhelming. It's, it's meant to overwhelm your senses. Your sense of touch, smell, taste, hearing, sight. Everything, all your senses are overwhelmed because you feel like you found the person of your, of your, of your dreams. That's how it goes. And it's understandable. That's why I tell people. It's understandable that you feel this way. And I, I'm not trying to make it hurt people's feelings or anything like that, but this is what happens, y'all, when you're dealing with a narcissist or toxic person. They, they throw it on quick. For real love takes time it takes time to develop it takes time to mature it's crock pot you put it in the crock pot it tastes better later on is it, you let it stew let it you let it sit overnight <laughs> the microwave is you no know, love bombing so slow yourself down that's one way you can kind of tell right there y'all if you slow yourself down in this space right there you know love like I said and the next thing in, in this space is that it's about control real love is autonomy both of you have individual autonomy over your own lives. You just do. In real, genuine love, once it, take, it takes time to build up, that person that really loves you let, allows you to be you, right? That person that actually genuinely, genuinely cares about you and loves you allows you the space to be you, right? They allow you the time and the space and the effort in order to be yourself, you have autonomy. You can go where you want to go. You can keep the friends that you have. You can keep the family members around. You can go do what you want to do, right? Love bombing is no autonomy. Like they, they love when they're love bombing you, 
typically that narcissistic person, you know, that narcissistic toxic person, whoever it is, when they love bonding you, they take over your autonomy. They take over your individuality. Like you start to lose yourself. You don't lose yourself in true love, in real love. You find yourself. You find out you discover parts about yourself you didn't know that you probably might, you, you might start to like about yourself. Love bombing takes you to a place you never wanted to go. You know, true love takes you on a journey of just self-discovery and self-development where you learn and you grow and you thrive. Love bombing takes you to the pits. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like the love, love bombing takes you to the off ramp to hell. You're like, oh, we're going to heaven. And you, they put the right turn signal along. You're like, wait, that's the hell. You're like, I know. And they take the turn. They take, they take the off ramp to hell. They take, they take you to a place you never wanted to go. You lose yourself. Love bombing is about control, manipulation. You see? It's about you lose your autonomy. You lose yourself. In true, genuine, real love, you gain. There's gains to make. You see? There's gains to make. There's gains to create. That's how it happens. That's how it goes right there. It's just in those spaces. You know? But so take your time. It takes time, y'all. It's crock pot. It's a stew. It takes time. That's how you go about doing things right there. You know what I mean? So the next thing right here, y'all. Uh, I'm adding chapters now, y'all. Real, true love is unconditional. True love is unconditional. Though, so do I believe in unconditional love? Yeah, I'm a narcissist. I have narcissistic personality disorder. I feel like there's strings attached to everything. To me, that's just to me, y'all. That's, you see what I'm saying? But real, genuine love from research and from what people say, there's no strings attached. It's you, there, it, there's no conditions. I like love bombers. It's conditional. If you refuse this, if you refuse this love, I'm going to take the love away. If you re if you break this condition, the love will be taken away from you. You know, true love. There's no condition. There's no strings attached. Of course, there's things that they can do to violate your boundaries and stuff like that. Like if somebody truly loves you, they're not gonna cheat on you. You see, you see what I'm saying? You shouldn't cheat on them. You see, like if you cheat on them, that that's the the the, the love should be taken away. You see what I'm saying? That's how my mind works. But true, real love, right, y'all? No strings attached. Narcissistic people. A lot of their love is conditional. There's conditional love. It's, it's love bombing. It's quick. It's fast. It's not sustainable. You know, it's not sustainable. It typically goes away over time. You know, it typically goes away over time. Like once you hit us, once, you know, a person who really loves you will love you flaws and all, right? They will love you flaws and all. They just will. You know, they see your flaws and they might love you anymore. They'll love you even more. A narcissistic person, when they see your flaws, they take the love away. You just broke one of their conditions. Their condition was for you to be perfect. Their string, the string that was attached was for you to be perfect and be flawless. I thought you were flawless. So you just broke one of their cardinals, cardinal rules or whatever. And now they're taking the love away. You see? Now they see your flaws. And we all have flaws, y'all. This is not me just pointing the finger at you and like, you're a flawed person. You, you deserve this. No, this is not me. I'm not saying, y'all, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that's how the, the mind of a lot of narcissists works right there is that they will point out your flaws and they will put, put, the, put the blame onto you. You know, it's your fault and they will leave you. A person who really loves you, loves you flaws and all. They kiss, they kiss, they kiss your bumps and bruises, right? A narcissist points out and points and laughs at your bumps and bruises. A love bomber, not just a narcissist, a love bomber points out your bumps and bruises. You know, real true love is sustainable. That's what, so, there, and it, I'm, I'm going to end it right here, y'all, with ways that you can, you know, set boundaries for yourself and things like that. But real, true, genuine love, like I said, y'all, it's sustainable. So this is one way you can t ask yourself, one way to, to counteract it is to set boundaries in the beginning, y'all. Say no. Because when you say no, like, listen, this right. When you say no to somebody, right? When you say no to a narcissistic person or a love bomber, that's breaking, that's one of those conditions right there. That's breaking a condition so the love will be taken away early on. That's how you can tell early on. I said no. I don't want this. This makes me uncomfortable. Set your boundaries. Take some time for yourself. Y'all, time for yourself is a boundary. If you feel like this person is just overwhelming you with love and just y'all on the phone 24 hours a day, y'all seeing each other all day, every day, you don't get a chance to see your friends and family, you done call, had to call them to work because y'all clapping cheeks too much. Like, yo, that's cool, fine, and dandy, but you should be able to take some time to yourself. If you're not able to take some time for yourself, and you just, hey, if you tell this person, say, hey, look, 
I really like you. I think we think we think you're cool, but I need some time to myself. I need some, I need a, a day or so to myself. Like, can you respect my time and my space? A love bomber will feel a certain type of way about it. A person who really loves you, who, who's trying to work on his love, will respect your choices and respect your boundaries. They will respect your individuality as a person. So being able to take time for yourself and saying no, help you in the beginning to tell the, to differentiate between is this real love or is it like, is this sustainable? Ask yourself that question right there, y'all. That's another way right there. Is this sustainable? The sustainability of this matters because love bombing is not sustainable. If it's all over the top, grandiose things in the beginning, is it sustainable? Maybe if they're rich and famous or something like that, maybe the stuff that they're doing is sustainable. But if not, y'all, y'all, we're going to, we went on the first, the first month we dated every, every day we went on a carriage back ride through the, through Central Park. Now we don't do that anymore. Now, y'all ask yourself, is this sustainable? And if it's not sustainable, Maybe could you move on? You know, is, is it too much? That's why if you if you if you are able to set the boundary and tell someone to slow down or this makes you uncomfortable, that shows you sustainability right there. If you're able to tap the brakes, if you're moving fast, because like yeah, real love, like I told you earlier, real love does move fast sometimes. Like real, it can it can move fast sometimes. But the way to tell if it's moving fast, if it's real love, it's just to try to you know, you might you you can tap the brakes. You are a passenger in this relationship vehicle. So you can tap, it's a driver's aid car. You got a brake. You um, you also have a steering wheel and a brake and a pedal on your side of the car as well. So if you're going too fast, you should be able to tap the brakes because once you start to tap the brakes and that person who really loves you notices that you're trying to slow down, they will slow down with you. They will start tapping the brakes too, right? They will start tapping the brakes with you. A narcissistic person, if they see you tapping the brakes, they'll start to slam their damn foot to the ground. They'll put, they'll push the pedal to the floor and try to floor it. You see them literally try to floor, the, try to floor it to get away from this situation, to try, to try to speed things up. Because the, one of the reasons why a narcissist wants to move fast, y'all, because they think if they move slow, you'll see the, you, you will see the real them and you won't like them. You will see the real me and you won't like me. You will see the real version of who I am and you won't care for me anymore. You'll do this and do that and you won't want to be around me anymore. You won't like me. That's the real, that's one of the reasons that a narcissistic person will show their ass. Well, like I say, try to move extremely fast. Not show their ass. We'll try to move extremely fast because they don't, a lot of them don't like themselves. A lot of us don't like ourselves. So we don't think we can like you. You know? You don't think we, we don't think you can like us because if we don't like ourselves, we see all the flaws in ourselves, then we think you're going to see them as well. And you know how narcissists are with flaws. You see our, we see your flaws. We take the love away. So we assume that you're going to do the same thing to us. You'll see our flaws and take the love away. So yeah, I hope this brought you some clarity. If it did, leave a heart in the comment section. That's your, that's your homework today. Leave a heart in the comment section. And also, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel, y'all. We're so close to 400K. We have 45, there's, there's a little, there's about 40 days left in a year. I don't know what's happening. Let's see if we can hit 400K on YouTube. That'd be a tremendous milestone. It means we reached four over two million people across all platforms. Three million. Um anyways y'all I truly appreciate every single one of y'all. I'm super thankful for y'all. Of course, like and subscribe if you haven't and I'm out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. You are a mental healingness rock star and I appreciate you for being here. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the screen to subscribe to the channel and watch another one of my videos in my playlist. There's also a link available up here for you to purchase my kids book. Remember, it's not your fault on Amazon. So check that out. Thank you. I will see you in the next video. Peace.